So let us get on to the next exercise, converting NYSC data to Parquet file format. And as per the problem statement, data is available in local file system, data NYSC um, on the lab. If you have Active Lab, uh, if you have uh, Active Lab subscription, otherwise you have to set up the data using the GitHub account. And I have already explained how to set up data earlier. You have to go to githubdata.com, uh, sorry, github.com, dgajraju data. So this is the repository you can clone or download onto your PC and you can set up the data. And then you can copy to the environment where you want to try it out. But on the lab, we already have it on data NYSC. You can see uh, there are uh, a number of files in it and you can actually view as well to understand the um, a few details about the data. You can see data is comma separated and it's in text file format. Um, and this is uh, one field, this is second field, this is third field, and so on and so forth. There are seven fields. So the first field is stock tickers, second field is the date on which the trading happened. This is the uh, opening price of for the day. This is high price, this is low price, and this is closing price. And then we have volume. And based on the, this information, uh, we need to get the column names and uh, the data types straight so that we can uh, um, apply that information to convert into file format such as Parquet file format. Except for text file format, most of the cases we need to use this metadata uh, so that data is stored uh, um, with uh, metadata as well because there will be no delimiters metadata plays a vital role in the file format such as parkway json Navro, etc that being said all the file, uh, field names are given as part of the problem statement itself you can see here so we should use this information to uh, while converting the data and then the location is local file system and the local file system have a number of files uh, some programming languages reading from directory is not provided out of the box that is the case with uh, scala so if i try to use spark shell and if i if i want to read all the files in one directory there is no direct api under scala.io.source there should be a way but uh, it it can be time consuming for that reason as the data is in local file system, if we actually convert into HDFS, we can use sc.txt file and then we can, we'll be able to process the data. Instead of using scala.io.source.from file and then reading all the files one after the other and then adding to a collection and then uh, converting into a RDD and then uh, converting into data frame to save it into file formats such as parquet file we can just copy the entire directory into hdfs and then from there we can actually use a c.txt file and uh, it will create an rdd then we can convert into data frame and then we will be able to save the data so let us see the solution okay so let me <coughs> go to my gist account where I will be providing that solution for you. Okay, first I want to copy the data using this because it's a Hadoop FS command. I will not be able to put it in the Scala code. This, ha this has to be pre prerequisite before writing the Scala code. So I, that's why I'm commenting it out. So I have to say hash hash here for slash slash here and then copy from local or put. You can use either of them. And then copy data NYSC to my location in HDFS, which is nothing but this one. And before running this, let me check if this path already exists. I don't want to create a subdirectory if that path already exists. And I'm running the command here. It is not there, so I can safely run this command. If it is already exists, probably 
you might want to delete and then load it again so that it is cleaner for for your problem statement when you practice in the certification exam i don't think these kind of issues will pop up uh, like uh, uh, data being already copied with the same names in HDFS and all. But anyway, checking it is better. Okay. And now I want to launch the Spark shell and write the code. And if, let me see. Yeah, so before launching the Spark shell, we need to check the size of the data set and use appropriate number of uh, executors to process the data. We should not be committing uh, a higher number of resources or lower number of resources. We have to give optimal number of resources. For that, I can run this command called du, du hyphen sh on data nysc, which will give the size of the file system, uh, size of this directory, which is 389 MB. So on this, you can either give four or six or eight uh, in that range. Uh, I think four is good enough. Uh, it shouldn't wear, take very long time to convert this 400 MB of data using four executors to copy um, uh, and then process and then save it as data frame. So here I'm launching the Spark shell with four executors. Okay, so I'll be documenting this. Okay. Once it is uh, um, once it is uh, started, we can actually start reading data from here. So here I am creating a variable called nysc equal to sc dot text file, and then give the path, which is this one, where we have the data copied, and then it will create a RDD of type string. But to convert to the data frame, we need to have the structure. So for that purpose, we have to use map function. And here I am giving the, the argument name for the map function as the n. Okay. And then let me see it as, uh, stock data and then I will create a variable called yes equal to uh, just let me give it a stock stock dot split and comma is the delimiter which will convert each record into another okay and then I want to um, I want to uh, create a tuple which will have all the fields. So the first one is stock ticker, second one is date, third one is <coughs> open price, which is of type float, which is already given. So we have to typecast it here. Fourth one is again float, fifth one is Again, float. Sixth one is again float, and then seventh one is a begin. And begin can be represented as integer in um, uh, Scala. So this is the tuple. And to convert into data frame, I can say dot two df, and I can give the field names. So field names are stock ticker. Those details are already given. Okay, so let's copy those field names. That is the safer. If you type, there could be typos and uh, uh, that can, uh, there is a little probability that that can cost your exam. Okay, so let us copy paste.
all these fields open price high price low price close price and then volume okay so this should create the data frame So NYC is the data frame name. We can say NYC dot show to see the data. You can see it here. This is stock ticker. This is transaction date, open price, high price, low price, close price, and volume. Now we have to save it as uh, Spark file format. Using Spark shell, uh, you can uh, use SQL context in uh, Scala, and then you can uh, use either save or write to uh, uh, two supported file formats so in this case we are interested in parkway so we have to just say sql context dot sql not sql sorry dot save and then give the path what is the path you can go to the problem statement and path is this one i'm copy pasting this and this has to be my username which is nothing but dgadiraju and then I can say Parkway. Also, I can say contact dot write dot Parkway and give this path. Okay, so we can use either either approach. So let me do it this way. SQL context dot so read load I'm sorry I was using the wrong uh, API here so this has to be applied on the data frame so I have to use NYSE here so it would be nyse.save or nyse.write this will work using sql context we can actually read the data to write it has to be on top of the data frame always write operations are either on rdd or the data frame so as we are using sql context you can see it is using um, more number of resources than than required so to avoid that we can uh, add this uh, additional argument sorry additional line of code which says sql context dot set conf spark dot sql dot shuffle dot partitions and then for in our case Okay, now I can use this and also let me delete the um, data which is already copied. You don't need to worry too much in case of uh, taking the certification exam, uh, but it, I just want to show you uh, how we can actually do it in the right way not only from the certification perspective typically uh, if it is using a lot more resources than it should then you should know how to tune it by giving optimal amount of resources and now i can go back to this uh, shell and uh, run this code Ah, sorry 
I did not uh, set the property once again. So let me fix that. So I will copy paste these two lines of code. Interesting, it is still using 21 tasks. Yeah, I know why it is using 21 tasks. That is because, uh, uh, because there are 21 different files. So even though I'm saying only, uh, I, I'm giving four executors and shuffle partitions as four, because there are 21 files, uh, it is actually using 21 tasks. To fix this, what we should do, we have to go back to our code and we can actually say coalesce of four because I don't want to use more than four tasks to process this data. You don't need to worry too much at the time of certification. I'm emphasizing that again, but this is the better way of um, coming up with the solution for this problem statement. Okay, so now I am deleting the files once again. And then rerunning the code starting from here. Once again, so it will use only four tasks whether you have Spark, uh, Spark SQL shuffle patterns or not. It will not use more than that. You can see here now it is using only four tasks to process the data. Now to preview the data because Parkway is again a special data type. It's a columnar, uh, sorry, special file format. It's a columnar file format. You cannot uh, view the data by opening up the files. To validate, you just have to use um, SQL context dot read or load. With load, you have to pass two arguments. With read, there is a, a sub method called uh, uh, parkway, and you have to give the path. Okay, and then you can just say show and hit enter. You are getting the data. So this is how you can um, uh, come up with the solution for this problem statement. Don't worry too much about this coalesce and all if you don't get it. Uh, but uh, if you just want to play with the amount of resources that are used to process the data, um, this is one of the ways. It actually reduces uh, the number of resources to process the data for downstream uh, purposes, okay?